You are listening. You are listening. You are listening to. Do not to not elsewhere. Not elsewhere. 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 Classified. Everybody, welcome to the Not Also Classified podcast. You are listening or watching part two of my conversation with Danita Ruskowski from Integrity Coding. If this is your first time watching or listening to this podcast. Welcome. In today's podcast, in today's second part of the podcast, we continue my conversation on really catching up since our first interview back in 2017. So I highly suggest a couple of things. Number one, listen to the first podcast episode with Danita Ruskowski back in 2017. You could check that out in our podcast. It's medicalcodinggeek.com slash podcast. Also, before watching this video, please make sure to watch the previous video. I'll link it in the uh, video here. And when you are watching this video today, just keep in mind that she is a great educator. But I think to be a great educator, you have to be able to engage. So as you're listening to her, notice how she engages in conversation. And, and note that if she can engage in conversation, she can engage as an instructor and engage with her students, which she has done. And because of that, she has grown her business, you know, with, with additional staff, with additional services and so forth. So without further ado, here's part two of my conversation with Danita Ruskowski. Enjoy. Right. <laughs> it's, it's so true. No, it is. It's so true. And the fact that she was willing to, you know, get out of the boat and take that leap of faith yeah. and say, I'm going to try it. But she listened to the instructor. So Brian, when I got into coding, you were one of the first, um, I didn't know a lot of, like I was brand new to Facebook. I'd never been on Facebook until I said, oh, yeah. I want to teach medical coding. <laughs> and I saw Brian, I saw him medical coding geeks. And what caught my attention, you were doing these funny, um, when ICD-10 was coming out, you were doing these funny memes. I still do. And that's. You, you do. Okay. Yeah. So you too, really, you're doing exactly what you're telling the rest of us to do. You just said, well, why not? Why can't I do this? Mm -hmm. You just do it. Yeah. You know, if, if I make a mistake, okay, I'm going to learn from it. Maybe I won't make a mistake and it's going to be really great. Either way, it's going to work out because you're going to either learn from the errors or you're going to grow from the success. Yeah. There's, Both there's... are going to bring no, that's right. That's right. There's there was nothing to lose when I when I did um the right. Nothing thing. to lose. There's nothing to lose. Um, really, the reason why I did all the funny stuff is I I want it's a little bit of sociology. I wanted to observe what mm. people liked, what people yeah. did not like, yeah. and so I did some of those um where I try to capture like a a meme, and I coded the meme right. Yeah, and I, yeah. And I put it there, and people were like, "Oh, this is great." And so I've evolved. I still put it on Facebook. I, I did a couple uh, these past couple of days. I, I moved on to TikTok. Have you ever heard of that? <laughs> you heard of TikTok? I, I have. My okay. daughters have shown me a couple of okay. funny videos. So I've done, I've, I've just, I just started TikTok. Okay. And, and let me tell you, it's, it's so much fun because yeah. it switches things around. When yeah. I first started the, the social media thing, I was coding the internet, right? But I was coding the internet from using somebody else's content, mm -hmm. right? So if it was a funny video or if it was, I, I love the traumas because um, even though they, they were okay, it was codable. Like, okay, right. what yes. happened? This resulted yeah. in this. And yeah. so, but unfortunately it, I was using somebody else's video to do that. And so there, of course, mm -hmm. there was some type of copyright issue, whatever. And so uh, I had to take those down. Yeah. But with, with TikTok though, what's nice and something that you can consider too, because a lot of medical coders are on TikTok too. Like, unbelievable. Oh, I might ask you to help me with that. The hash, I, I will. The hashtag medical coding has over 1.1 million views. Mm -hmm. Medical billing and coding in TikTok over 1.3. I'm like, what views? Now, here's the thing with TikTok is that compared to videos are like what 10, like one minute, two minutes long. Mm -hmm. TikTok is only nine, nine to about 30 seconds, right? Oh, it's like take all, like imagine, take your, let's see, I'm looking at your, your YouTube videos. 
the the highest that I've seen so far is about an hour, right? Urinary coding. Also, you have a respiratory system coding about an hour, mm -hmm. right? So imagine taking that hour, putting it into 10 seconds, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough, right? So I I I eliminated that that need to compress yes. so much information. And I think you're doing that now is is using TikTok to capture attention. You know, like, oh, this let me give you just a glimpse of what we do as a medical yeah. coder. So I did one on <laughs> just look at it. If you if your daughter okay. has it, look up medical coding geek. And yep. -E coding geek. And I already done a, a few. I did one. <laughs> um what was one? Oh, the, the sound got taken off. But anyways, I did one where I was a CDI specialist and I was calling the physician and the physician goes ah, like making all of these noises and just, just listen to it because I yeah. was, it's, it's just using some, some other sound. And it, instead of me using somebody else's video, I become right. the centerpiece yes. of the video. Yes. And I, early on, when I started, so, you know, the medical coding geek, I did not want to be, you know, I didn't want to bring my face out, you know, yeah. I didn't want to put myself out there as right. being the guy is medical coding geek. I said, no, 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 no. Medical coding geek is a community. Correct. But Correct. then when I, when I did TikTok though, it forced me to just be out there. And I think YouTube did that too. When I did the YouTube channel, I'm like, okay, I got to put myself on camera and I, 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 you know, in 2020, I was really, you know, during the pandemic, I was really debating it. Like, do I mm -hmm. want to put myself on, on video? I mean, I, I have myself on audio. That's okay. Do I really want to put myself on video? I'm like, once I started the, the YouTube, it just got so much easier. And then after right. that, I started creating TikTok. And then now there's one, like, let me tell you, Facebook is okay. Uh, TikTok is okay. I have one video that's about 10.3 thousand views and it had a deal with like uh, the the video is me coding and then working from home of course mm. that's, that's a big hashtag to look at uh remote work and i'm coding right i'm doing this and it's playing a song and i'm 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 mouthing you know to the song whatever it may be and then i'm getting disturbed so then the the next frame is like i'm looking over like who the heck is bothering me? And it's my, and I put my face to the camera, like, you know, like it's me, you know, doing yeah. that. <laughs> and that's about, I saw one when you were playing a guitar. Yeah. That was, that was the first one. Okay. And that was funny. It that was, was hilarious. Funny. It wasn't me. People think I was playing the guitar, but it's not me. It's this, it's the sound. But right. I, but what's nice about TikTok is that you can slow down the video and you could play to the, to the yeah. music or whatever the sound is. But I do it in such a way that it's so slow. I play with right. it so slow that it looks like I'm in you know, normal speed. Yeah, you know, yeah. I did, the, I did that one. And so 10.3 10 thousand just to promote medical wow. coding. And because of that, I think it caught the attention of Norma. And so what really, yeah, and that's, that's how a, the whole, okay. that's how all of this started. So it's not, right. so it has it nothing to do like, with me teaching anything, right? It's just me giving a glimpse of what medical coding is as a result of that. And I, we kind of like, you know, touched on it in our, in our session with Norma, she's, you know, it's like, okay, I can't believe that you found me on Instagram. Cause I, whatever I put on TikTok, I put on Instagram reels. Yes. Yes. And um, to me, Instagram is like, I don't know. It's, you know, what I do in TikTok, but Instagram reels, reels, Instagram reels, just keep in mind that Instagram reels takes it like to another level okay. you know, in terms okay. of use. So like, if you do one on, on Instagram reels, um, you're talking about like, for one, I had one, like, you know, it's reaching about 10,000 views because there's wow. some weird algorithm. And I think the idea of the algorithm is as long as it, is it gets views and likes and engagements. It'll just mm -hmm. stay in the loop and just stay in that, you know, algorithm to being shown every time. If people like it, if, you know, they'll like, it'll just stay there. Once it kind of yeah. fizzles out in the engagement, they'll just take it off and then it'll okay. stop, you see? Right, So right. It, it's like, it makes you more like a director for nine seconds, nine to 10 seconds or 15 seconds, whatever it may be. But I don't even try. I was like, okay, let me just do this because it looks either I really look dumb and doing it or funny. You know, I just doing it just to do it because nobody else is doing it. 
So we call in coding when we're teaching, we always call it answering the why, like mm. why. And so what I'm hearing you, like what I would say is why not? Why not yep. do it? Mm. Because it's taking the focus. It's not about you. It's integrity coding is not about Danita. Right. Integrity coding is about, you use the word empowering. Mm. It's about taking students, giving them this amazing opportunity to become a certified professional coder. Right. So that you can then open up this door of opportunity because it's out there. The opportunity is out there. It's just waiting for you. So just take it, learn this skill so that you can then get your certification right. and open up this door. And like I said, I'm going to give Nick as an example. As soon as he got certified, he said he got, I don't know if it was three or four job opportunities right away. Mm -hmm. You know, but I'm going to even tell my students about about Norma, because I heard you saying you weren't sure what her name was, but her name is actually her name is Norma. Yeah, her, her Instagram, her Instagram um, handle uh, had the name Mia and I kept on yeah, calling okay. her Mia. She's like, no, I'm Norma. I'm like, OK, I'll okay. call you Norma then. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. OK, yeah. you're Norma. <laughs> but so but it's, you know, just to tell students, you know what? This is a young woman who isn't even certified yet. She started applying for these jobs. Mm -hmm. Just start applying for jobs. Just see what happens. Just put it out there. Yeah. Apply for, you know, apply for medical billing jobs. Apply for entry level coder jobs. There's a, there's another episode that I did. It wasn't on video, but there was an interesting story. Her name is Stacy Tortorica. I love saying mm -hmm. her last name, Stacy Tortorica on the podcast. It's not on video. Um, her... Uh, she had zero um, certifications, but mm -hmm. she was very smart. She mm. knew the coding ins and outs. And her yes. story was that she applied to this position. Yeah. And uh, as soon as she got to the interview, she was already um, indirectly dismissed. Like, okay, we already have somebody who's already going to come after you, who has the experience who has the uh, certifications. Do you still want to take the test? And she says, yeah, I'll take the test. And so yeah, I'll she, take your yeah, test. I'll take your test. If you're going <laughs> to indirectly dismiss me. And so, <laughs> and so I, and so she said that she took the test, but she, she not only took the test, she corrected the test, right? She corrected the test. And so uh, eventually they called her back. And she says, I think we would want to consider you. And she's like, well, what about the other person that uh, you were yeah. talking, referring to that you indirectly dismissed me? And right. Says, well, that person didn't do so well on the test. You were the one yeah. that did the best. Wow. Yeah. So it's like, you know, no matter, I mean, I, I, I love what you're doing. You're, you're teaching the certifications, you're providing them with the certifications. Uh, but I think what you do the most is empower that person, Right. Like, for example, Nick, Nick, get out, you know, take your break, come back. Yep. Right. All right. <laughs> I'm helping you yeah. out. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's it, I, I can imagine Nick being having this personality, being in power, taking what you have taught him and portraying it to other people. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and how much I, money cannot be the sole goal of why you're doing what you're doing, because after a while, you know what? Money's just an end to a means. Mm. So yes, has integrity coding grown? Absolutely. Mm. But you know what's the best part of it? My instructors now, this is uh, making a living for them. Mm -hmm. uh, my students passing their exam, it's now helping to make a living for them and then others. There's just so much opportunity. Mm. It's not going to stop. Coding's going nowhere. Because as long as there's people, there's going to be health. And as long as there's health, there's going to be health care. Right. So it's, you just have to stay up to date with whatever right. is, is going on. That's right. And um, yeah, there's, there's just so much opportunity out there. You know, like, so when you're saying you start, went on TikTok, like I didn't even think about, about TikTok. So now Brian, you just gave me more food yep. for thought. Thank TikTok, you. TikTok, there's TikTok. There's, Inst I'm just going to tell you, Instagram Reels, Reels is the newest thing. Do not post it's on, don't post a picture on Instagram. It's not going to work. Post something, content, video, uh, you doing something. You just, even just a 10 second promo, use yeah. the right hashtags. Cause that's, yeah. uh, 
that that will help uh, grab the attention of people in other hashtags. And what I've learned too is don't use specific hashtags. Don't use like, okay, medical coding, whatever it may be. Use things that relate to medical coding, mm-hmm. like, you know, healthcare, physician, nursing, you know, everything that kind of revolves around that. That's more popular to me. It's more popular than medical coding that yeah. would lead yeah. into medical coding that yeah. will help you lead, you know, transfer those people into your Instagram account. And then from, they look at your profile and then they look mm-hmm. at your free into introductory coding course that's coming up in the future, whatever it may be. Right, 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 uh, right. It's, like, it's that, you know, and I think when we did that four years ago, I was, I was, and even after that, I was trying to teach you that, that marketing funnel, right? Yes, you did. Yes. Yes. And so you, you've, you've really ran with that. And, mm-hmm. you know, you've, con- I think what you did is you just kept on going, right? Mm. You kept on going with it. You kept on, you, you, you haven't stopped using the event, <laughs> right? You still I use have- it? How did you know? Oh, because I used hashtag. You used, no, I no, you used it. So you used it four years ago. You were here yeah. on YouTube back then. That's yeah. how you used it. You started. You, you did not use Facebook events. You stuck with Eventbrite, and you still use it now, right? I do. Yeah, I do. Because for some reason, in the Boston area, that seems to be a a, a big thing. Mm. But obviously, we're all all over the country now. Mm. So you know, and then even there, I use different different hashtags to, to get the word out. And then we we're still kept with our boot camps. The boot camps are, that's like once you're ready to sit and take that exam, mm-hmm. the boot camps have still become one of my favorite things to teach mm-hmm. because it's not just coding I'm teaching. I'm teaching how to pass this exam. Mm-hmm. And so now everything we do as many things as we can and offer CEUs with it um, so that students can come to the boot camp, experience coders, can get your CEUs very reasonably. Mm-hmm. And then we started our membership club that you, okay, wow. you're a member with us, you know, come back because you have to keep up with those CEUs. When I hear instructor, not instructors, but coders that they let their CEUs lapse, like, oh, you're going <laughs> to test all over again. <laughs> so we have made a way that keep up with those CEUs at a very reasonable price. So yeah. when you're a member with us, there's many, many CEUs you get for free. Yes. And so we just kind of spread with, we're just doing as much as we can to be as affected and effective and serviceable as we can yeah. so that students and coders uh, get what they need, mm-hmm. which ultimately is going to mean practices are going to get what they need. Let me, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Since, since, oh. um, since the last podcast, have you done any speaking yourself? So I, I haven't done uh, speaking. I've, I've gone to practices and I will, you know, help train some of their coders. And I speak live at my own when I do my own boot camps, mm-hmm. but I have not done live speaking events yet. Why not? Yet. I know. Why not? Right. Yeah, why not? Why not? I mean, you have the, like you have the, the presence, you have the mm-hmm. voice, you know, and I, it'll definitely help promote your, your business for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, I think once you, I mean, you're under AAPC. I mean, ever since I I got linked with AAPC um, with my first speaking engagement, um, once you do one, you can't stop. Really? Uh, Coming seriously. And uh, because it's been, well, at least for 2020, because it's been virtual. I mean, I mean, I think I, I did like, how many last year? Like 20, 19 events, right? I'm gonna, I was going to say, Brian, shut up. But that sounded disrespectful. I didn't mean it disrespectful. No, no, no. But no, no. Shut it's, it's, up. it's a lot. It's a lot. And um, I found that the Facebook groups, they have the AAPC regular one, right? They have the AAPC paid member, which I'm not part of. They have AAPC officers, right? uh that that work within each other and for some reason my name came into that group uh, mm-hmm. because i used to teach uh, a cdi twice a week uh session and my name got thrown into the loop and then one of them contacted me and says do you want to speak for us over in uh coco beach which is about an hour away from me right. i'm like okay and then after that daytona called me then after that uh gainesville called me then after that 
I don't know, everywhere else contacted me. And, right. and, and the thing that I do, which I'm, I'm going to give to you as well, is, is whenever I got invited to a pl- you know, an area to speak, and it doesn't matter if they paid me or not, I still do right. because it helped promote them and also helps promote me. Right. And whenever I say, oh, I'm speaking at, like, I, for example, I just did Orlando. I, I'm speaking at Orlando. I'm talking about DRGs. Thank you, Orlando, for, for inviting me. For some reason, that just mm. uh, promote that just excites everybody around. And right. because right. of that, um, it opens the door for other people to invite you. So you will, I got a bunch of emails like, like, th- like 2019, 2020. Oh my gosh. I was just, I just kept on coming and I at least had one for ev- one or two every month mm. just to speak on a, on one or two main topics that I was very passionate about. I only had two, right. pre- I only did two or three or maybe four presentations. Yeah. And I just kept them on a, on a rotation. Right. Okay. So, yeah. Brian, that's very interesting because I really think I would enjoy that because I'm very much a people person. I think you would. Yeah, I think that I would enjoy and I would love to. We have a lot of students from the South Carolina, Florida, mm. North Carolina mm. area. So I would I would love, I just talked to my husband about that. I would love to come to Florida because people say, would you come oh, to you Florida better. and teach a boot you camp? You and let I me said, know. All right, we'll do we can meet you and my husband. We can have, we can just sit and your wife and we could sit and have dinner and talk. And I would, cause that would be so cool to meet in person, but I would love, so North Carolina, South Carolina, Florida, you'd be watching because you integrity coding when, is coming. You let me know when you're in Florida. Okay. Hey everybody, if you are enjoying the podcast so far, please consider liking this video and also subscribing to the Not Ultra Classified podcast YouTube channel so you can be notified for future videos. Also, please check out the Medical Coding Geek YouTube channel where I also post videos on the medical coding, CDI, and HIM community. Also check out medicalcodinggeek.com where we offer a lot of uh, services, including our Facebook groups. You can go to medicalcodinggeek.com slash services. Check out our Facebook groups, including Medical Coding Geeks, the RHIT and RHIA exam support group, the CDI network. We have a marketplace where you can sell and buy your books. We also have the CEU hit list. If you're interested, interested in free CEUs, I release a monthly list of free CEUs that I find on the internet. Also, you could follow us on social media, not also classified. Everything is at NEC podcast for medical coding geek. It's at MED coding geek. You could find us on Facebook, Instagram, and we are also on TikTok. If you are listening to this episode, please make sure to subscribe and rate our show on Apple Podcasts. All the ratings and the reviews help our show get noticed. Also, I wanted to take a moment to promote our partners. You could check them out at medicalcodinggeek.com slash partners. They include the Haugen Consulting Group, RadRx, Project Resume, Renown Talent, and so much more. And of course, you could find me, Brian Kui. My last name is spelled C-U-I on LinkedIn. So without further ado, let's return back to the show. Okay. <laughs> that is... All right, so we'll talk. We'll talk more about that because I was just looking into hotels and everything where where to book this. I love the in person because I I teach them up here in the Boston area. There is nothing. We have pretty much, pretty much a hundred percent pass rate. When you come to an in person boot camp, usually you're going to pass that exam the first time mm-hmm. because we and we have fun, Brian. We have, yeah, I mean fun i bet you do and then i um we have some really good italian restaurants up here so i usually have a a meal here for my students oh perfect so yeah so it'll be great i really love to make it like a really a fun two or three days i've even thought of doing like a week-long you know the places that do the week-long boot camps Mm -hmm. that i was thinking of that too but we were going to keep the price really reasonable because Mm -hmm. students cannot i mean we just wouldn't charge the fees that are out there. We keep mm-hmm. it as reasonable as we can, but that time together, I feel like I'm at a Sunday dinner when I'm with these students because we're talking, we're conversing. 
and I can see in their eyes. And when students get that aha moment, you're like, you, you they feed got off it. of that. <laughs> oh, when they it's understand. Like a, it's like a high oh, to you. <laughs> yeah. Like second order, third order. Is that when they, you know, the catheter? I'm like, yes, that's it. You're mm. right. Mm. And they, but you know what? They finally, like, do you know how good that makes them feel like, I'm not stupid. Mm-hmm. That is a lie. I yep. can do this. Mm-hmm. All right. So Brian, maybe this, let's talk October, November. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Let yeah. Me. I was in Florida. We went to Orlando in April. You and, were here um, in April and you didn't let I me was, know? Uh, well, we had a family vacation. I wasn't, it wasn't an AAPC, oh, okay. but I was down there. I'm like, we where, in, where, Orlando, where were you? Um, do you want me to, can I name the place? Yeah. Okay, West something resort, West Lakes. Mm. It was just a little bit outside of Disney. Okay, I am so, about two exits away from the main road into Disney. I'm in Champions Gate. Okay, well, we went to an ice cream place down there, right at, if you, obviously you've been to Disney World. There's an ice cream place, really great ice cream right outside Disney. What's mm-hmm. it called? It's in Main you know, Street. Is it Main Street? In Main Street and the, the Magic Kingdom? Is that what you're talking about? Is it called Disney Falls or? Disney Springs. Disney Springs. Yeah. That's it. Fall, spring. I'm about winter. 15 minutes away from there. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. This is so, 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 so doable. All right. Now I am very, in Boston, we say wicked. I'm so wicked excited right <laughs> now. That we could, that would be great. That would be really great. And I would love to meet these students in person. Yes. And then the next place I want to go, we have a lot of students at Atlanta. I just, I want to. wonderful. To, yeah. Yeah. So I want to. Make a tour. That that's great. Yeah. yeah that's, that's. Uh, the integrity uh, like, coding tour. Yeah. Cause when I, when I look at, um, I mean, for medical coding, but when I listen to podcasts for comedians, Right. Yeah. So comedians are now just coming back into the swing of things because yeah. of, because after COVID and all of that, they 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 kind of squashed all their shows. And now you're seeing comedians come back with their tours. Yeah. And yeah. They're doing tours like on this, like like every time they would uh, promote, like okay, on this date I'm gonna be here in such and such place over in this place. Tickets now are on sale on this, mm. and they're just promoting each other, promoting promoting themselves in their podcasts. Yeah. So they'll just do that on a regular basis. I'm going to be here. I'm going to be here. And I think um, it provides a lot of excitement. So like for you, um, it would be your student base. For me, Mm -hmm. like, for example, if, you know, I take a lot of like, for example, the podcasting for four years has a lot of data, right? So I look at the specific states and Mm -hmm. I can look at the specific cities that are most Mm -hmm. popular. So for me, it is Florida, of course. I mean, mm-hmm. I can go around anywhere. Like Tampa is, is huge, yep. especially compared to Massachusetts. Yeah. Uh, Florida, uh, Texas, uh, California. Yeah, a lot of students in Texas. Um, Washington, for some reason, is very popular with a podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, I know Georgia for sure. I've, I've, yeah. uh, I've been to Atlanta. It's wonderful there. Um, I don't uh, New York is, is another area that has been very popular with the podcast. So like when you, when you get a sense of like who your demographic is, right. Right. Then you can get a sense like, okay, should it, should I make it worthwhile to make a trip there? Cause that yeah. was my, that was my initial plan in 2020. Seriously. Like before everything kind of just put everything to a halt. I'm like, okay, I am going to this conference. I am going yeah. to this conference and I am going to grab my microphones and I'm going to do a podcast with somebody yeah. who is in that area that's very popular there and do that in person. But then after that, it's like, okay, back to this, back to uh, the, <laughs> the, the drawing yeah. board, you know? So yeah. that's, that's how I pretty much wanted to do it. So, you know, then if students are listening or when you're listening to, to Brian's podcast, if you're interested in the Atlanta area, Florida area, I would love to meet you. Um, let, let me let's, know. Let me know. Yeah, let me that know. would be really great. When you have exact dates after after this session, um, I will post them, of course. Okay. Uh, in the YouTube and in the podcast. Uh, of course, I do intros and outros, of course, and I will make sure uh, to let them know if there's anything uh, new uh mm-hmm. to share so if there's any upcoming events you let me know i'll, I'll make sure that i'll get the yeah we out. have a lot going on yeah we good do for so you. I, good for you yeah so we right. are th- that's already an hour <laughs> i know i know is there, is there anything else you want to you want to chat about 
Uh, I just want to tell students, uh, the sky's the limit. Mm -hmm. Don't quit. Don't quit. Look what Brian's doing. Look what, you know, how it's impacted. I met Brian four years ago and how it impacted. How you know, what's funny is that we did this. We did this over the phone. We did. We did this I over remember the phone. I was sitting right over there. I do remember it. I do this, remember that. This is not the same place that I did it yeah. in, by the yeah. way. So like the last time I mentioned in the last podcast, it was probably in my dining room table or in my room somewhere uh, or in my, in my living room in my townhouse. And so what you're seeing now is, is, is kind of like the, you know, the progression from right. the, the podcast. I mean, it's, it's come a long way. It's growth. Yeah. It's growth and growth is good. It shows health. Yeah. So that that's great. I'm very happy for you because you've influenced, you're, you're influencing um, this, this fear, you know, the healthcare industry, you're influencing it. And in, I just hope integrity coding uh, goes the same way. You know, we're, we have a lot going on. If you are looking for classes, just go to our website, mm -hmm. integritycoding.com. Mm -hmm. Yep, know. lots and, going on. And you have your YouTube channel, right? The YouTube channel. And that's, you know what, Brian, those are simple. I took my phone when I first started. I took my phone. I put it here on my, hi, yeah. this is Dina. I'm going to talk. Now I have my laptop and I, you know, I can do it this way. Or I might record something on uh -huh. another platform and post it. Yeah. But again, it's not about, I could have all kinds of fan dangled things. The core of coding will always be, I want to teach you the guidelines. The, that is the Bible of coding. It takes from being just a so-so coder mm -hmm. to being a really good coder. Mm -hmm. That you're going to know, because once you're certified and you're working in billing, and say you're working denials, maybe you want to start your own business, you're going to know why something's denying. Yeah. If you know those guidelines. Yeah. You're going to look at that diagnosis. No, we can't use that diagnosis that went out the door in 2000. You know, we still have people that are, I don't know, we still have companies that may be using outdated codes or mm -hmm. no, this diagnosis does not go with mesh with this procedure. So there's just, it's never ending of learning. Like you said, you never want to stop learning. Let me, let me tell you something. You, you mentioned bringing codes to life. And so since then I was a CDI specialist. Now I work for doing the denials. I give the denials now. And so. Ah. <laughs> Watch out. <laughs> but what I what what I what I did like what you said is how you how you with your daughter being was an ICU nurse right in in Cardinal. yeah she, yeah she brings the codes to life and I think that that if you teach that to your coders that will help you when you bring your codes to life it'll help you appreciate what you're coding. Right? right. It's not just like, okay, I'm just going to put this code and send it on its way. I could kill yeah. us. You know, the doctor right. documented it and I'm just going to put it in the code and when I put it on the bill, I'm just going to send it on its way. There's no meaning. There's no attachment to that. So when you right. said your daughter brings the codes to life, I think that's the best defense, you know, in preventing a denial. If you can appreciate the codes as much as the as much as me, because you're going against me, because now mm. I have elevated the codes beyond to the clinical side and the documentation. And I'm putting that all together and mm. I'm, I'm translating. I'm truly translating this code. Does your translation for what I think somebody who's been in the field for 12 years compared to yours? You know, it's, mm. not like, it's not like I'm trying to say I'm better than you, but it's like this is what you need to do to prevent a denial. Yeah, it sounds like a, a court of law. I'm the plaintiff, you are the defense, mm -hmm. or, or the prosecutor, and you're going to say, mm, yeah, probably not. Let's take that back. Uh, we'll review that. So what do you see? What do you feel the biggest denials are? And I can just, you know what I would think? If you're looking at denials, you know what I think you'd be thinking? Is, this coder, thinking? is this coder <laughs> certified? <laughs> when did you come up with that? Hello? <laughs> I do. I do. I will. I don't exactly say that, but I, I have some choice words, but I, I work yeah. over here. I face this way. So this is my, this is my podcast and I'm working over, I work over here. Right. Yeah. And so what's nice as, as a, as an auditor is I'm not limited to one organization. Right. So if you've worked for one organization for so many years, you know, the ins and outs of documentation for that mm -hmm. one facility. And after 12 years, I'm like, what else is there? 
you know like, right. what else is there you know like is there anything else be- beside this is yeah. this better than you know somewhere over in the other side of the country you know and so when i first started this new job in 2018 oh my gosh i would do charts massachusetts i used to do you know the you, you know, leave the- out massachusetts alone <laughs> Massachusetts, Washington, I would do Texas, I do Florida, I do jo- all over the place, right? All over the place. It's not the fact that they're bad or good. I, I just had exposure to everything. And there are, I mean, you think like you, I think for most institutions, they feel like they are the, the creme de la creme, you know, yeah. they the best yeah. of the best because they push that. And that's good. It, truthfully, you're probably better than the rest of the nation because once I left my, my institution and they, I, I felt like, you know, whatever they implemented in their education and their policies and procedures, I felt like for me, if I can code for this institution, I can code anywhere. Yes, yes, right? yes. You have that yeah. feeling, right? And so if you have that feeling, don't, you're, you're good. Yeah. <laughs> I think you're good yeah. because when you go step somewhere else or you look at somebody else's records, yeah, you, you Hello. won't believe what you see. And like right. you mentioned, you have to question, like, first of all, first of all, like, okay, who, who taught this coder? You right. Know, why did they, like, I would say, why did you assign this prince? I'm not going to get into specifics because of course, conflict right. of interest. Right. Don't. So why did you assign this principal diagnosis? Why did you assign this secondary diagnosis when there's nothing to support it, right? Right. Why did you, or even CDIs, even CDIs yeah. is so bad. Like, why did you query this? And you look at the clinical validation that would support their questioning to the physician and it doesn't support. Like mm-hmm. one of the things that I would see is, you know, the, the, the query placed when it shouldn't have been placed because there's nothing to support it to begin with. And when they put into the, in the, the choices, let's say, for example, if it was a condition, right. I'm just going to say sepsis for the sake of conversation. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Does this, you know, eventually they'll provide their thoughts on what the clinical, th- their evidence is, right. They'll do the work. They'll place it in the query. Here's what we found. Here's our clinical evidence. And then the question would be, um, do you think this patient has this condition or what would you say about this condition on sepsis? Is it ruled in? Is it ruled out unspecified or other? And so, you know, if you leave, you know, those check marks type of things, they're just going to check whatever they want and say, okay, I think to get you off my back, the CDI, I'm just going to say sepsis ruled in. And mm-hmm. so when I look at it, okay. And I'm looking through the whole entire record, where in the heck did they find that they coded sepsis? or they documented sepsis. And guess what? It's only in the query, right? So um, sometimes the query can be part of the legal record. It's a choice between, uh, it's a choice to not put it. It's a choice yeah. to put it. And the ones that decide to put it, I mean, it really shoots them in the foot, you know? <laughs> Do you have to go with all by, are you looking at any kind of um, lab work or anything for that yeah. as well? Or I look yeah. at everything. I look at, yeah. I look at what the coders don't look at. Yeah, yeah, I think that's, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, what, that's yeah, what, that's what, yeah. um, that's, I think to me, I've always talked about it. It's like, okay, you can't go by what the doctor documented. You kind of have to elevate, you have to, I mean, yes, it's Dig what in. the doctor doc- document, you take what the doctor documented, but also pair it up with everything that would support it. You know, so, if the, so yeah, I'm sorry, go, Brian, ahead, go, go ahead. ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I was gonna say coding's a story. You know, I always tell coding is a story you are the narrator Mm -hmm. as a coder. You're taking all that information and you're telling the story to the insurance company. You're telling that story to Brian as he looks at the claim that you coded and he's looking saying, why did you do that? Mm -hmm. Or you're you're telling the story of the patient left the house because of this. It then, you know, you have your etiology, your manifestation, EB4I, you're gonna code depending, is it inpatient, is it outpatient? But nevertheless, you are a storyteller. Yeah telling the story mm-hmm. so that your providers could get reimbursed properly. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're trying to, you're trying to, uh, how would I say, you know, uh, going back to uh, Sonal Patel, she likes to paint that medical picture. She likes to paint it. And in, in order for you to paint it, you can't just have, you know, one color or um, just the physician documenting it. 
And sometimes physicians just doc document the, the, the condition without anything supporting, uh, mm -hmm. considering that they, they think what, how they think, and we cannot make an assumption based upon all of that. I think, you know, even though coders cannot code from labs and radiology, it is up for the physician to put, to package everything together. Right. You know? like, like, for example, okay, patient has sepsis uh, presented with, you know, treated with, like, it's a paragraph, yeah. you know, like, yeah. this is this is the yeah. packet. Don't just say sepsis, but right. sepsis presented with this, had this, had that, we treated with this, and the patient improved. And then, then that's it. Right. I'll accept yeah. it. There are times yeah. where there are times yeah. where I would uh, validate a chart. I would only look at the discharge summary because it's so good. Yeah. The documentation is so good. Like, okay, I, yeah. I think I don't have to go beyond that because right. he put everything that is needed to support that condition and I'm good. So coders, I hope you're listening to what Brian just said, because that documentation, that's why they need us. Yeah. It, and, you know, documentation specialists and uh, auditors, mm -hmm. you are needed. Just think Brian is the one at the end of that code. When you're done with that chart, it's not just next. What, did you, what are you giving that look for? It's like, Brian it's me. Like, yeah. Because it's, it's like, I'm getting, Brian like, is, oh, is okay. looking at it. All right. <laughs> exactly. Like, anything else in here? I'll be like, uh, denied. <laughs> um, okay, I'll I'll keep this one. I'll get back to you for that one. I'll get back uh, to you. No, denied. Don't forget that. Yeah. <laughs> but but those denials they can really ruin a practice if you don't have accurate codes and you don't want to miss your filing. Mm -hmm. I mean. One thing leads to another. Yeah, it's not yeah, just a yeah. song. And if you don't do it right, it delays your money, right? Your accounts receivable, your cash flow. It does. You know, so that's one thing that I, I mentioned to um to Norma. It's like if you don't get it right, just one account, you're delaying it up to at least for the inpatient side. I don't know right. how it is on the outpatient side, but for inpatient side, you're talking about six to nine months to accurately say, uh. you know, for one account. Now imagine multiple accounts no. and you're just holding back, you, you, like, you know, your CFO is going crazy. Like, where's our money? We have right. to wait six to nine months after discharge to receive it. Like what's going on here? And so that's why you have a backflow or a reduced accounts, you know, cash flow. It's, it's that's ridiculous. Not good. Yep. And end of month, everybody knows working in coding and billing end of month. You want to make sure you are, you're up to date, whatever you are, whatever carriers you are responsible for. Mm -hmm. Um, and again, I'm talking more of the, the billing side now. Yeah, yeah, than that's I am right. Coders. That's right. Yeah. But it, but yeah. it, but whatever coders do it, it holds up the billing it process. Does. Yeah, it does. It yeah. does. It does. Yep. Yeah. As long as the, just like the cardiology, if you don't look at it as a flow, there's going to be some type of blockage somewhere. So right. you just got to right. fix it somewhere. And that's, right. that's something that, uh, at least, um, at least for me, what, what I'm involved in in September is like, you know, getting to the higher level of trying to identify that revenue cycle process, right? Mm -hmm. So you teach the coding. I am now kind of like, you know, for coders that are listening to this, like, okay, you start in coding, but then as you evolve as a coding professional, then you look at it. Okay. I am a coder. Then eventually you want to look down into the coding process. Like how, what does that look like in the coding yeah. process, right? The coding yeah. flow. And then, th then that's where revenue cycle management comes into play. And so right. that's where I'm kind of at right now. I'm like, okay, I'm trying to learn that. I'm trying to piece everything together on how that works. I see Brian Q revenue cycles incorporated. <laughs> Why not? Probably. Somebody's going to do it. Might as well be you. Probably. Or I just yeah. make, I just keep on continuing making podcasts and YouTube videos. <laughs> yeah, well, you could do that too. And TikTok. <laughs> yeah. Now you've got me thinking about TikTok. I'm going to have to look into it's, that. Let me tell you, it's, that. it's so much fun. I think because you know, I had to consult my 13 year old daughter about it. I was like, okay. That's, uh, can you imagine like really something that we have to ask our kids about? Like, Hey, how do you do blah, blah, blah. Like my, my almost nine-year-old granddaughter, Faith, you know, how do I not do she was Donna, you got to use your effects or something. Like she makes pictures of her face, like a little doggy when she's talking to me. Mm -hmm. I'm like, how'd you do that? Cause you got to use your effects. I'm like, Oh, okay. I thought so. I was just asking. <laughs> I don't know. They're teaching you like, you know, yeah. uh, editing effects and stuff that isn't like really like high priced 
uh, editing software. That's yeah, it's yeah. for free on TikTok. That you I can know, do. it's really I know. crazy. Um, so hopefully we'll see you on TikTok. Any questions yes. about TikTok? Let me know. And Instagram yes. Reels. That's that's a, a definite plus. All right, All right. So let's uh, let's wrap it up. Is there any final words from Danita to wrap up this podcast episode? I would say don't ever stop learning. Don't ever give up and don't ever listen to those lies in your head that say, I can't do it. It's too hard. If you give up, you're stopping that whole flow of possibilities. And once you stick to it, and then when you finally sit and you take that exam and you pass, not only are you going to be able to bless your own family, but help others. You can't give what you don't have. So stick it out. Don't quit. No matter what, don't quit. Jim Rohn has a great quote, and then we will end with this. Mm -hmm. Jim Rohn says, don't wish it were easier. Wish you were better. Don't wish for less problems. Wish for more ability to solve those problems. So you don't give up. There's no quitting. So there you have it. That completes my interview with Danita Ruskowski. You can check out Danita on many social media platforms, including LinkedIn. Uh, you can check her out on Facebook. Uh, you can check out her website, integritycoding.com. Also, check out her YouTube channel. Medicalcodinggeek.com.